Hey guys, what's up? It's McNeil from uh, Louisa Automotive. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about ownerships. Now, this video is specifically for Ontario people. Uh, so both dealers and consumers, because I have a lot of customers at our shop when we sell a car, they don't really understand which is the ownership for the car versus which is the ownership for the plate. So today we're going to be breaking down um, the ownership so you can understand which title is for your car and which title is for your plate. So for dealers, I'm also going to be explaining to you in the end of this video, uh, there are certain situations where you may have bought a car from Odessa or Trade Rev. You have not received the ownership yet and you already sold the car. Good on you. But now you're trying to flip the car to the customer name and you don't have a title for it. How is that possible? How can you do that? Let's get into the video. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Yeah, so now, uh, first of all, uh, before I get uh, into the video in depth, well, as you can see, well, finally uh, get the GTI back on the road. So the first nice, nice sunny weekend, I was able to take the GTI out. So thankfully, the um, was that the Hyundai uh, Elantra I was driving throughout the winter. Uh, I sold that uh, on Friday. So we will have a cost reveal coming out on that as well. Now, uh, just to keep the cost reveals a little bit interesting, it's almost like an inside bet, kind of like with the subscribers. Let's see, what do you think makes more money? If, if you look at the last cost reveal we did, which was the, um, I believe it was the, I think, Kia Rondo, I showed in that video, the shop made more money than the dealership actually made. Okay, so the service department made more money than the dealership made in that flip. I'm going to have a Hyundai Accent, which I'll be delivering uh, on Monday, which you see, you probably seen this video Monday. So I'll be delivering this car on Monday, that car as well. Tell me in the comment section, do you think the dealership made more money on that car? Or do you think um, the shop made more money on that car? And also I'll do a cost reveal on the Hyundai Elantra I just sold, same thing. Let me know which one you think. You will not believe which one will make more money. So did the shop make more money on the Hyundai Elantra and, or did the dealership make more money? So you can just say Elantra, shop, or sales. Uh, equally, you can just say um, accent, shop, or sales, okay? Whatever. I just think it'll be interesting because sometimes the shop make more, sometimes dealership make more. Now we're trying to go more into the service. I kind of want to uh, keep that ongoing bet to just see who does better. Now, let's get into the ownerships. When you look at the title of the car, first of all, something that a lot of owners or people overlook. When you look at the ownership, the information is a duplicate on the left and the right. It's pretty much the same information. It has a VIN number on both sides, your name on both sides, your driver's license information on both sides, your address on both sides. So it's very hard to decide or see which is for your plate and which is for your, your car. So a lot of people didn't even notice that was a two type of ownership, like two two ownerships if you look in the middle you can clearly see there's like these dotted lines what they call them per per perforated i can't even say that word uh you can cut it down the middle half is for the car half is for the uh plate all you need to do is flip that over when you flip the the ownership over uh you will notice the side that has something that looks like a contract where there's a spot to sign as a seller there's a spot to sign as a buyer that one will be the title for the car or we call it the ownership for the car. The section that has those big empty blocks where when you renew your sticker, they would give you a little additional sticker that goes behind that. That would be the ownership for your plate. Now, keep in mind, we no longer have um, stickers here in Ontario. That was just recently canceled. I made a video about that when it was coming out. You can check it out if you like, uh, but we don't have to pay for stickers anymore. So the one where you used to put that little sticker in the back, that is the ownership for your plate. Now, the tips for the private sellers or private individual non-dealers, something that we always have to remind you is never give your plate to another person. Now, I know that might sound like common sense, but a lot of people do that. A lot of people even try to trade in the car and say they need a new plate and tell me I can keep the old one. It's not yours to give away. It is the property of the government. And uh, I know that you have a title for it, but technically MTU can take it from you at any given time. So it's really theirs. So whenever you sell your car privately, do not give the plate portion ownership or the plate itself to the new person. Always return that to MTU office if you do not need it anymore, because you want them to take that plate out of your name. You do not want any ties to that because if you give it to the person and they park it anywhere else, that parking ticket still comes to you. So when you sell the car, I want you to rip the ownership in the middle where you can clearly see the dotted lines in the middle. 
keep the side that I just explained to you that is the plate portion. You want to keep that with taking the plates off the car. Give the person the car and you sign the back of the ownership where it says seller. Sign it there where it says seller. On the buy, it will sign where it says buy, obviously. And it's put, fill out the information. It's self-explanatory. Fill out your information where it says uh, new owner and all that kind of jazz. Very simple. And that's how the ownership stuff works. Now, for the dealers who made it till the end here, uh, it is a common situation if you're lucky to sell your cars very quick. Sometimes you buy a car at the Dessa and uh, maybe it was a special order. Or maybe you had a walk-in customer or you're lucky and that car sold right away. And sometimes when the cars sell really quick, you don't have time to get the ownership from Odessa yet, or you didn't get the ownership from Trade Rev as yet, or Mannheim, wherever you got the car from, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is you bought the car and you don't have an ownership yet. Sometimes the auction, if they do flip the titles for you, if they already flipped the title into your dealership name, when you go to the ministry, you would have to apply for uh, what we call a lost ownership or lost title. Uh, it may cost you anywhere from twenty to thirty-two dollars. That price changes all the time. I'm not sure exactly where that price is right now, but the price is ir irrelevant. Uh, you just have to apply for a lost ownership. Once you apply for a lost ownership, they print out a new one for you. It's already in your name. At the exact same time of them printed out for you, you flip it into your customer name. So it is same day event. is not a big deal at all. Where it becomes tricky is sometimes. Um, what, because you just bought the car, the auction equally did not flip the car from the previous dealer name into your dealership name as yet. Sometimes they didn't do that as yet. And to be prepared for that, you need to go to the ministry for a copy of your bill of sale. So proof that whosoever name the car is in, let's just say you bought the car from Louisa Automotive uh, and your shop name is JJ Sales, whatever. Uh, you need a bill of sale showing that JJ Sales bought this car from loser automotive because when you pull a loss on the ownership when the ministry pulled the loss they'll realize the ownership is not in your name it's in loser automotive's name so they can't legally give you that title because it's not in your name the only way they can give it to you is you proving to them that you just bought that car so you'd have to literally give them a copy of the bill of sale they'll print out the ownership in my name which is loser automotive and you would do one of those sticky there's a, a ownership They'll give you a sticky ownership back where you would sign that you bought the car, flip it into your name, and then flip it into the customer name. Sounds complicated, but the ministry people will guide you how exactly to do it. You just to save you the back and forth going to the ministry. If you're about to pull a loss on an ownership to save you the trip, just photocopy uh, the purchase agreement or the bill of sale, walk with it just in case the car is not in your name yet, okay? That will save you a shit ton of time because I see a lot of times, go to the ministry, you're missing that one bill of sale and you had to go back to your office, print it, come back. It will save you tons of time, okay? Now, uh, thankfully, this uh, comment came from a subscriber. So you guys are leaving great ideas so we can know what kind of content you, you, you want, uh, what kind of topics you need clarity on to help you transfer the vehicles. Uh, so if you have any ideas, don't forget to leave them in the comment section below. It doesn't mean that everyone will be able to make a video on, but we'll try our best to catch up and to make as much of them as we can for you. So again, this is how you flip the car from your name to a custom name or from the custom name to your name. Hopefully this was helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. I think only about, what, 15% now of you are subscribers. I know we crossed the thousand marks, so I haven't been asking for subs, but hey, uh, don't forget to sub. It does help the channel out, okay? Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.